sorry i went on mute so welcome to this uh, problem solving session on machine learning today we'll be solving questions on the topic um linear regression and bias variance trade off okay some issue with the slide so pardon me for that uh, as always my name is aditya agrawal and i hold an ms in computer science from iit madras i'm ex data scientist from the high rate district technology in hyderabad and i hold a btech in computer science from the kalinga institute of industrial technology so let's dive in and look at the first question which of the following is not true about residuals higher the better is lower the better a or b depends on the situation or none of these so over here in this question the thing to know here is what is the meaning of a residual right so now we are talking about linear regression let's take some sample data points okay let's take this point take this point this point this point and this point or maybe this point okay maybe your linear regression fits a line like this Okay, let's say this is your line that the linear regression algorithm finds. If you look at this point, right? So this point over here is some x true, and over here is some y true. But if you look carefully, my model will predict that this is nothing but some y p, right? So this part right the difference between yp and y true is my residual is the part that is left residue right whenever you are trying to fit a line to some set of data points the amount maybe amount is not the right word maybe the difference between what it was versus what did your model predict that difference squared is called a residual now why is it squared right if you seen my lectures i had discussed about it but just to recap for people who have not seen it so i could also take a you know absolute value as well right but why i don't do that so see again i have a choice to do that as well focus on this point that i am circling here on the top right okay so if i extend the axis further then this uh, this point corresponds to y true prime let's say i call it y true prime and this corresponding axis x true prime now my linear regression algorithm will predict this point as y p prime and this difference forms my residual right if i don't take the square let's say i take it this way if i say this value is let's say i assume it's minus 5 and this value is let's say plus 5 okay or maybe the other way around because i'm doing y p minus y t this is 5 and this is minus 5 okay so if i try to find the total error then 5 minus 5 will give me 0 and i can claim that my machine my model has zero error okay which is wrong because you are trying to cancel out the positives and the negatives so that is why what you do is either you take the absolute value which is you just omit the sign or what you can do is you can take the square right that way you will be missing out on the you will be not having that problem of a negatives okay so if you understood this now if i ask you a very basic question right residual is nothing but the difference between what it should have been versus what your model predicts okay the y true and the y pred do you want that to be small or do you want that to be big and you might think that it's pretty simple to answer this right it's pretty simple to answer this question 
it is actually very it's always better to have a lower residual right lower the better the more lower you have the better is your line right so that is why option b will be the right answer okay fine moving on which statement is true about outliers in linear regression a linear regression model is not sensitive to outliers linear regression model is sensitive to outliers you cannot say or none of these so let's take another very basic example of a two dimensional coordinate system with this set of points you might find the best line something like this okay again this is just a guess you can get some other lines as well this is my best guess of the line that your linear regression model might predict now let's say there is a point far off okay which has a value like this okay now you might see the relation that for this point the x1 here let's say this is x1 this is x2 this is x3 this is x4 right correspondingly they have their y1 they have their y2 they have their y3 and they have their y4 right and let's say this point here x5 has its corresponding y5 okay okay now if you see this thing x5 y5 is a very off right it doesn't depict the correct relation to the data but what happens here is you are when you are trying to fit the linear regression model maybe this you will you are extending this line further right and your model will predict some value for this which is something huge right and the residual y5 minus y5 dash let's say dash denotes the prediction will be huge and and if you square it again then it will be more huge and the one of the reasons why people do squaring is if they want to penalize such huge errors because as you know square is a exponential function right so 2 square 3 square if you go to 100 square it 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 grows exponentially if you have seen the graph of x square y equal to x square it is something like this right so to penalize the higher residuals you will try to use a squared but here it's an outlier so because of this point you might try to shift your line to something like this okay maybe i'll use a different color for it to understand maybe your model will use something like this okay in that way this residual and all the other residual will become will become minimal right so just because of the presence of a outlier this is called an outlier because a data point that is very off from the true relationship of the data just because of the presence of this outlier you will face an issue and that is why linear regression model is very very sensitive to outliers now though i have never taught you this but there is another thing here how would you detect an outlier how would you say there is an outlier so for people who are interested again this is not in your syllabus but just for interest try to look at something called box plots box plots are a good tool to detect outliers okay and then you can do outlier treatment you can you can there is something called interquartile range you can consider all the points that fall in that range you can consider removing the outliers if you have a huge set of data points if you remove let's say 100 of them are outliers then you can just remove them there won't be much of a difference in your model accuracy maybe it will become better but only do it when your model is 
sensitive to outliers. Okay, so linear regression is actually very sensitive to outliers. Again, I am not telling you here that if you don't take the square, if you take the absolute value as well, it may still blow up. Okay, it may not blow up in the same um, intensity as the one if you square it, but it will still blow up. Okay, so this is what it is. So main thing is to know the concept behind it. Just knowing the answer won't help you in the exam. Okay, fine. They are in the exam. They might give you a sample data set where you can see a particular outlier and then they will ask, should you remove this point? Such that your, your model accuracy will become better. So in, 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 in other words, they're trying to ask you is the model sensitive to outliers? Okay. Fine. So the next question here is. If we increase the value of K in a K and N, the model will dash the bias and dash the variance. Okay. So I have already taught you a lot about K and N, right? So take one minute, think about it. Okay. And let me know what you think about this answer. Okay, so you may pause the value, pause the video as well to know it, right? So actually what happens is if you increase the value of K, then your bias increases while your variance decreases. So for any machine learning model, if you analyze the error, then there are two, three principal components. One is the noise in the data set. So noise, you can't do anything as per the model. One is the bias and one is the variance. Variance would mean once you have built the model, then if you look at some random data set, how where how vary will how will your predictions vary? Okay. So if you have a higher value of k, then you are looking at more number of values to find the correct prediction for a particular data point. So if you have some data point that is not present in your original data set, since you are using, since you are looking at a lot number of values of K, then your model actually generalizes better in the sense, the variance is very reduced. Okay. Variance would mean if you look at an example data point, which is not in your data set, how will the, uh, how will the predictions vary? Okay. So if you increase the value of K, then your predictions will be more spot on because you are looking at more number of values. It's more like if I ask you, uh, which college do you want to join in gate? Okay. If you ask 10 people, your prediction will vary a little less compared to if you ask just two people, right? If you just ask two, I might say, go to IIT Madras. My friend from IIC Bangalore might say, go to IIC Bangalore. If you look at, if you ask 10 people, then you will have a more better answer to it. Your variance will reduce, right? But here is the thing. So other thing is your bias increases. Okay. So to understand that, understand what happens if the value of K is one, if the value of K is one, then you're only looking at one data point. You are only whatever decision you are taking for this data point, whether it should belong to which class you're only looking at one data point. In that case, your variance will be huge. Right? Because if you see an unknown data point, you're just looking at one, one nearest data point to it and then deciding the prediction and then deciding your answer, your variance, your, your model will vary a lot. Right? But, but oh, sorry, your variance will, uh, huh, your variance will be huge. But if you look at the bias, your bias would mean you are not actually looking at each and every other data point. You are only considering one, right? And taking a decision. That's it. I'm only con already considering one. Okay. It's more like if you increase the value of K, 
then you are kind of saying the model that hey um, just one data point is not enough actually to make a prediction maybe i need two maybe i need 10 maybe i need 100 right so you are increasing your bias right we are increasing your bias okay again i have explained this thing very well in the video if you don't still understand please watch my video on knm what i am trying to say is if you increase your bias you are taking more number of you are not looking at the model that much you are saying that oh i don't trust this data point because k is 1 no because if let's say k is 5 i don't trust only one data point i need one more data point maybe one more data point one more data point that way what you can do is uh, your bias will increase and if your bias increases subsequently your uh, variance decreases right and that is what is the answer so if you increase the value of k in knn the model will increase the bias and decrease the variance okay fine moving on to the next question ha huh. so in a logistic regression if the predicted logit is zero what's the transformed probability so again you learnt logistic regression think for two think for a minute take some seconds 10 seconds 20 seconds and then we will discuss the solution okay sorry guys i was actually talking on mute all this while okay so in a logistic regression if the predicted log it is zero what's the transform probability so as you all know the log it right so the log it of x is log of x by 1 minus x and then you have to find the value of x right so given this value is actually zero right this is zero then you can write this as x by 1 minus x is equal to 1 right and that means x is equal to 1 minus x and you can find the value of x as 0.5 okay so please remember this function the log it of x is log of x by 1 minus x 
right? I may not have taught this. I don't remember if I taught this. Okay, but um, this is not very important also, but make sure you're just aware of the formula such that if you are given any such questions like this, then you can answer it as well. Okay, fine. Let's go on to the last question for this video. If you are given n independent input variables from x1 till xn and dependent target variable y, a linear regression model is fitted for the best fit line using the least square error on this data. The correlation coefficient of one of its variables, say x1 with y, okay, sorry about that, x1 with y is minus 0 0.97. Which of the following is true for x1? Is the relation between x1 and y weak? Do you call it strong? Do you call it neutral? Correlation does not imply relationship. So first let's understand the question, okay? Then we will solve it. First, the main thing is to understand the question. You are given n, inde n independent input variables from x1 till xn, which means there are n features in your data sets. Okay? And you have a dependent target variable y. And you are trying to fit a linear regression model to find the best fit line possible. And you are using the least square error on this data, adding the residual and you are minimizing it. The correlation coefficient of one of its variables, let's say x1 with y is minus 0.97. Which of the following is true for x1? One thing that you need to understand here is, what is correlation, right? So I'm not here to teach you statistics. I don't want to take a full lecture on correlation today. But what correlation means is, let's take by a simple example. If you have two variables x and y, let's say I write a very basic data set. Sorry. Let me write it again. Okay. Not good to overwrite, right? So let me write it again. 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Right? 9, 10. So now you can see very clearly that it is nothing but y equal to x plus 1. Right? You might have heard a background noise. Sorry about that. Okay. So y equal to x plus 1. Right? And if you see, whenever x increases by 1 unit, y also increases by 1 unit. Right? Can you see that? Whenever x increases by 1 unit, y also increases by 1 unit. So these two variables are highly correlated. They are correlated. They are related to each other, right? So this becomes a very important feature. And the, there is a coefficient called Spearman's coefficient relation, correlation. So the value of the coefficient should be from minus one to one. And if I tell you the correlation coefficient between X and Y here is a pakka one, perfect one. More it is towards one, which means with the increase of one variable, the other increases in the same manner, in the same set of manner. So if it is perfectly like whenever X increases the Y, Y also increases by one, that's called a perfect correlation and that way you can get one. Now, what is meant by minus one? So think of another scenario, X and Y. Again, I have from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And let's say it's something like this. So over here, if you see y is actually x minus 1, right? Whatever is the value of y, with one increase in the value of y, sorry, x, if one increase in the value of x, y decreases by the same amount, y also decreases by 1. So here the coefficient of correlation will be minus 1. So with the increase of a variable, if the other variable also increases, it is a positive correlation. With the increase of one variable, if the other other variable decreases, then it is called a, uh, then it is a negative correlation. So, in that, the correlation coefficient of one of the variables, let's say x1, with y is minus 0.97. Which of the following is true for x1? What can you say about x1? 
okay if you guys want to think you can pause the video here think of some time and then answer it after you have heard my uh, concept the concept that i taught you so here if you see with one unit of increase in x right y decreases but maybe not in the same manner maybe not like minus 1 maybe like um, i don't know maybe minus 0.97 okay it's not a perfect correlation or maybe there are some points that decrease uh, or absolutely like that with one increase in x y decreases with one some points not increase like that there could be some variation in that space so that's why it's not a perfect minus 1 it is minus 0.97 and this also means that the relation between x and y is very very strong even though it's negative so you can mod so if you let's say have this right so i will give you one more tip today if you have this if you have any other feature right actually you won't need that feature you can just use this x1 and then calculate this model this is the function right this is the hypothesis of the machine learning model and then whatever you get data point you just look at x1 and find the value this way you are able to do feature selection as well and feature selection by correlation is one of the main is one of the very important topics in machine learning which you don't have in your syllabus but again if you know machine learning before or if you have worked or if you will work if you are really interested then you will definitely find this you will have to find the correlation between individual features it could also happen that let's say um there are, let me give you another small example okay so let's say there is another feature um x2 which is like uh 2 4 9 16 25 36 49 64 81 so if you see x2 is nothing but x1 square so with one unit of increase in x1 x2 also increases in this x2 also increases they are highly correlated right you can say that x2 is x1 square so you are not actually getting some any other new info from x2 whatever is x1 is just a square x2 is just a square of x1 it's not a whole new feature that can help you to do the predictions so you can also remove x2 in that case so feature selection by correlation is a very important uh, feature selection technique that you can use in your machine learning projects as well so if you have understood that well, again let's come back to the question itself y being minus 0.97 is also considered a good amount of correlation between the two variables and that is why which of the following is true for x1 relation between x1 and y is very strong okay the only thing confusing might sound is why is the negative sign it might be weak no minus means it is actually very strong as well you look at the uh, correlation coefficient to look at the you have to look at the absolute value or the magnitude to actually deduce that whether it is Uh, whether they are co correlated or not okay so again uh, thank you for joining this lecture for maybe that clears your concepts a bit more you get to learn a bit more and uh, know a bit more stuff regarding um, gate in particular and gate d and machine learning okay and this is the first time that the gate da paper is happening so no one can predict what questions are there but these are the best bet of questions that i can think that might be asked in the exam okay so we'll meet in the next lecture again if you like the video please feel free to ask any questions you have like comment and subscribe and uh, make sure you visit our website to know more if you want to enroll in our gate exit courses make sure you visit our website inquire about them number is given here you can also email us at info@itnsgateclasses.com right with this uh, i would like to end this lecture today Thank you for listening.